Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm Pastor Anthony L. Walker coming to you from Transformation Ministries. We're located at 115 Cothy Avenue in Fayetteville, Georgia. And I have a great message in store for you today. But before we get into it, I always like to direct your attention to our web page, which is tm-church.com, tm-church.com. Please share with others. I'm not trying to go viral with it. I just want to get it to the people so they can uh, find out what's going on here at Transformation Ministry. There are three things that we like to uh, communicate here uh, in our, doing our service and our message. And that is what the Bible says, what the Bible means and how to apply what it says and mean to your life. And so let's open with a word of prayer for the service and for the message. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for waking us this morning. Thank you for your love, grace and mercy. Thank you for providing for us and protecting us, Father. Thank you for your unmerited favor. I ask a special blessing upon today's message. Uh, it's titled, Yes and Amen. And Lord God, I pray that uh, people would tune in and receive uh, what uh, the word says, what the scripture says, and they be able to take in this message and have a greater understanding of what it means uh, for yes and amen. Uh, Lord God, bless everyone in Jesus name. Amen. Should that be yes and amen? Okay, I'm I'm going to begin with the, the following scripture from Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ unto the church of God, which is at Corinth. And I want you to pay close attention to this scripture because I don't want you to miss what it entails. And it is scripture coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17 through 20. And it says, when I therefore was thus minded, did I use lightness or the things that I purpose? Do I purpose according to the flesh that with me there should be yea, yea, and nay, nay? And that was a question. But as God is true, our word toward you was not yea and nay. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you uh, by us, even by me, uh, Silvanus and Timotheus, uh, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. For all the promises of God it, in him are yea, in other words, yes, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. And I'm going to say more about this passage. I'm going to try to paraphrase everything that I just read in those scriptures to help you understand it better. But before I do so, I want to begin by asking a question. Have you ever poured out your heart to God uh, to grant you a specific request? I know I have, and I'm sure that you all have at one time or another. But after waiting for some time, you felt as though your prayers fell on deaf, ear, deaf ears. Did God not hear your prayers or did he choose to ignore them? And some some people I know for a fact as people have provided in me and that's how they have felt. Or maybe is his answer simply no. And it can be disheartening and confusing when God feels distant from you uh, and your prayers are not answered. And God's responses to all your requests will not be a guarantee. Yes. Like I always used to say and still say that God is not a genie to grant us our wishes. Sometimes his purpose is simply, uh, uh, his responses to us is simply no. So other times his responses may be wait. Uh, when God's response to our prayer is yes, all is well in the universe as far as we're concerned and we're happy, we're praising and thanking him. Life is good, right? Yeses, we love our yeses. But when God's response to our prayer is no, Doubt clouds our mind. You uh, may uh, wonder if you did something wrong uh, for God not to give you what you want. You begin to second guess God. Now, you know it's true. You've done it. We all have done it. It is important to note that while it may feel like God is ignoring your prayers, he is not. He hears you. Perhaps God is working behind the scenes. You know, sometimes the things that we ask for, 
uh, God has to work on other people to provide the things that we ask for. He will respond, but sometimes those responses do not look the way you might expect or arrive the way that you thought they would. We expect God to do things the way we want it, but he is God and God knows better. You may not get exactly what you ask for exactly uh, when you want it, when you ask for it at that time. Maybe God is going to answer you, but in an unexpected way. And it is essential that you remain open to alternative answers. You Sometimes we're single-minded people and, hey, God, this is what I want. Give it to me. But God, like, oh, this ain't what you need. I'm going to give you what you need, not what you ask for. I'm going to give you what you want not what you ask for. Sometimes we don't know what we want and God knows what our wants and needs are better than we do. So God's plans are often different from your plan. Isaiah chapter 55, verse eight and nine, familiar passage. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways or your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Because God's ways are higher than your ways, he may have a different plan or timing for your life. I know that this does not make the waiting any uh, and the uncertainty any easier for you to, to accept because we want it now. We want a microwave response. Uh, we want it quickly. And so, but when God says no, that does not mean that he is keeping his promise from you. In Romans chapter 8, 28, another familiar passage. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. When God says wait, that does not mean that he will not grant your request. If you love God, all things will work out for you. God may say yes in better timing. Not right now. It may be better timing for you. Or he may say he may continue to say no, because no doesn't mean that God did not hear you. So be patient with God. Do not be one of those people who think that God does not hear their prayers. And this. There's a scripture that comes to mind when people tell me that God does not hear their prayers and they don't like my response or the scripture that I point out. But it's John chapter nine, verse 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Now I'm not saying that you are a sinner by introducing this passage to you. But if you are, uh, if you are, then you need to repent and you need to follow and obey God. I mean, that's that's being a Christian. That's being a believer. Those are the requirements. And if you can't do that, then you're just a sinner. And God does not hear your your prayer. Um, not that he's deaf, but he's not going to respond to those who he doesn't need to respond to. Uh, his first priority is that you be one of his. So you got to repent, change your life and do better. In Matthew chapter six, verse 33, it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. These prayers that you are making, these requests, these petitions, you know, so, but it's going to be what's best for you. If you want to understand that, uh, uh, to understand that God does not withhold answers, I want you to understand that he does not withhold answers uh, to your prayers as a form of punishment uh, or for bad behavior. No, he's not going to uh, do that for that reason. However, he knows when your heart is not in the right place. And so it can be, he can be withholding it for another reason. In James chapter four, verse three, it says, ye ask and receive not because you ask amiss or you ask wrong that ye may consume it upon your lust. So sometimes God's apparent silence 
in his way of giving you a much needed heart check when you are praying with the wrong motive. We're asking for stuff and it's not good for us. It's not good for others sometimes, the things that we ask for. So I am only speaking to those who need to hear this because, you know, sometimes people get offended when I might say, hey, God does not hear sinners or you're asking for things with the wrong motive. But I'm just trying to give you a heads up or warning or educate you that hey, you need to do things with the right heart, um, with the right mindset. You should take this time to reflect uh, on your relationship with God and examine your own motives and desires. We all need to do a check, uh, check up on ourselves. Uh, my sister wrote a book uh, that check yourself before you wreck yourself. Yeah, we have to give ourselves a checkup. She had a following book. I'm plugging it for. He said, before you wreck yourself, you better check yourself. So that's volume one and volume two. Uh, Lisa, you're welcome. And so ask yourself if there is anything in your life that uh, may be hindering your prayers. Sometimes we hinder our own prayers. Could uh, there be something that you need to seek for forgiveness or areas in your life that you need to make changes to? Instead of being disappointed or agitated or angry with God, use this period of waiting to grow in faith and develop a deeper understanding of God's plan for your life. Some people have no clue what uh, their purpose is and uh, what plans God have for them because maybe they're not uh, in the right place with the right motives and the, with the right mindset to even receive what God is uh, trying to give them or trying to tell them. So trust him, trust God, and remember that he knows what is best for you, even when you cannot see it. Seek God's guidance by reading scripture that offer clarity and comfort during times of waiting and uncertainty. God wants you to trust that he will do the best for you, even if it is not what you like. You might not like it, but it might be best for you. So remember, as when you were sick, you didn't like the medicine, that castor oil, but they say, take your medicine. You got to take your medicine, which is best for you, which is the word of God. Take in the scriptures, so you can understand God better and you can understand yourself better. So it is the promise of God that are the yes, it's the yes and the amen. I'm going to go back to a part of the scripture that I read initially, the last verse, which is verse 20. It says, for all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. So even when God's answer to your prayers is no, you can confidently rely on him to fulfill his promises. I'm not saying fulfill your prayer, but fulfill his promises. Uh, that is um, the point that I wanted you to catch when I read the opening scripture, which was 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17 through 20. So let me paraphrase this scripture for you. Paul was saying to the people of Corinth, or should I say he was asking them if they thought that he was having a change of mind or a reversal with his promises, a yes one moment and a no the next. And Paul says he, he tries to be as true to his word as God is to his. And so Paul, Silas, and Timothy preach of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ and their words were not a careless yes counseled by an indifferent no. Their yes meant yes. All of God's promises are yes. Let's say it again. All of God's promises are yes and all of God's promises are amen. So in Jesus, this is what they preached and prayed. God's yes and, and theirs, their yes, talking about Paul, Silas, Timothy, and, and all the preachers today who are preaching truth, their uh, yes, and there was a sure thing in Jesus Christ. When they're preaching Jesus Christ, they are preaching the promises of God, which are always yes and amen. 
Let's look at some definitions here. Let's first look at the word yes. I know what yes means, but let's bear with me. Let's go over yes. Yes is a confirmation or an affirmative reply. It is to say that you understand, you accept, or you agree. Absolutely, without a doubt. In the context of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, amen means yes. Let's look, take a better look at amen. Amen is derived from the Hebrew uh, word amen, uh, which means certainty, truth, or and verily. In English, the word has two primary pronunciations, amen and amen. It can be expressed with a soft whisper, amen, or a shout, amen. You know, so um, yes signifies God's faithfulness to his word, while a man express agreement or affirmation, meaning so be it. Yeah, I agree, and so be it. That's how it's going to be. Amen. Yes. So it's all of the above. The word translated to yay or yes uh, in Greek means sure. And the word translated to a man means firm. So all of God's promises, talking about his word, are sure and firm. They are unchanging, unwavering and unmovable. He will do what he says he will do. Unchanging, unwavering, and unmovable. It is in Christ that every promise of God is yes and amen, sure and firm, meaning that God's promises are guaranteed to confirm and confirm through Jesus Christ. What are the promises of God? I've been talking about the promises and, and how they are yes or amen, but you may be thinking, what are the promises of God? So I'm going to tell you, uh, God has made many promises to mankind uh, besides answering of prayers. So let's look at some of God's promises. Eternal life. God promises eternal life to those who believe in him through Jesus Christ. Here are some biblical verses and Bible verses uh, that mentions eternal life or uh, talks about eternal life. In John chapter 10, verse 28, it says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. This is a promise of God. John chapter 11, verse 26. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Believest thou this? Romans 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God's promise. Yes and amen. 1 John chapter 2, verse 25. And this is the promise that he hath promised us even eternal life. And there are so many scriptures, but each of these topics I'm going to go over, I'm just presenting four scriptures because I'll be here all day. But let's move on to the next promise, which is forgiveness. God's promises to forgive people's sins when they ask for forgiveness. And here are some Bible verses that mention forgiveness of sin. Oh, I'm going to drop the P off this scripture here. This is Psalm 86, verse 5. For thou, Lord, art good and ready for, for, to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. God's promise. Proverbs. Chapter 28, verse 13. He that covereth his covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsake them shall have mercy. It's part of forgiveness. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. 
And I say that if you forgive men. So if you don't forgive them, your heavenly father is not going to forgive you. That's a God's promise. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. It's God's promise that Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, is going to cleanse us of our sin. Next promise is presence. God promises to be with people always, even until the end of time. Here are some Bible verses that mention God's presence with us. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. <clears throat> he will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. <clears throat> so God is going to be with us. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. So no matter where you go, you can't hide, and ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low. <laughs> you know that. So you can't get away from God. He is with you. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God promised that he would be with us. And one more uh, scripture is Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. God's making promises. With God's promises to be with us, his presence includes his plan, his protection, his provision, his peace, his power, his prize. And those are the P's for his presence. I'm going to pause on this just for a second. His plan, his protection, his provision, his peace, his power, and his prize. Now I'm just going to present one more, one last promise. And there, these are this is not exhaustive. There are so many. God made many promises in the Bible. I'm just providing a few so you can have an example of what his promises are. This last one is called unconditional, <coughs> unconditional, <coughs> unconditional promises. God makes unconditional promises that cannot be stopped by human actions. Unconditional promises are gifts from God that are rooted in his love and grace and their fulfillment rests solely on him. Not you, but him. So here are some Bible verses that mention God's unconditional promises. In Genesis chapter 9, verse 11. <clears throat> and I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood neither shall there be there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. You know, the Noah's Ark and the flooding of the earth, and that's how God destroyed uh, mankind except for the eight and all the animals that were on the ark. And so he promised not to do that again. And man can't do anything about that. God's promise, he did it. No, man could not do anything by him fulfilling that, and they can't do anything for him uh, not doing that again. He's not going to do it. He promised us that. It's unconditional. There's no condition by man that can make him change his mind either. And so Numbers, look at another promise, unconditional promise. Numbers chapter 23, <clears throat> verse 19. 
God is not a man. So we should not look at his, him with limitations like we look at man. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said and shall he not do it? Have he not said it and that he did not do it? Or have he spoken and shall he not make it good? So if God say he's going to do it. He's going to do it. God did it. That's how people say, won't he do it? Yes, he will. He's done it. He did it. And he's going to do what he say he's going to do. Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. God promises to fight your battles. So you don't need to worry. Just pray and trust God. That is his promise to you. John chapter 14, <clears throat> verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So God is saying, don't you worry, don't you be afraid, uh, don't you doubt, don't you worry or any of that, because peace he leave with you, his peace. And it's up to us, though, to choose to accept this peace that uh, he has left for us. And we have to remember that um, the joy that we have, the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away, the peace that we choose, we have, it's our choice. We have the free will to receive all that God has for us and that all he has promised us, or we can go against that and have doubt, which we should never have had but because of Adam and Eve. Now doubt is introduced because of knowing good and bad, and bad, and we doubt which is which. So, to move on, God's promises are trustworthy because he is unchanging, he is all-powerful, all-wise, and he is faithful. Trusting in God's promises and answers mean trusting in God's faithfulness to you and to you choosing to be faithful to him. Now, we do. We have a part in that. We have to choose also to be faithful in him. When when you pray, you need to let go of your own agendas and welcome God to answer your prayers. However, is truly best. However, he see fit. You can be assured that in Christ, all of God's promises will be fulfilled in your life. Trusting in God's promises and answers means saying yes and amen to whatever God chooses to do through you as you walk in faith with him. Don't worry. There's a, there's a, a saying, if you're going to pray, don't worry. If you're going to worry, don't pray. You got to just trust in the Lord. You can say yes to trusting that God will keep all of his promises in your relationship with him. You can say amen by living faithfully, including God's promises into your daily life. Surrender your will to God's will in every situation and wait with perseverance for God to fulfill his promises, regardless of how he answers your individual prayers. No matter how he answers it, his promises will be fulfilled. If you have a relationship with God through Christ, you cannot have a relationship with God no other way except through Christ. You can live with a full assurance that God will fulfill every single one of his biblical promises in your life, no matter what. No matter what. The promises of God are yes, and amen, because God faithfully keeps his promises, even when he says no to your prayers. One final scripture and then one final word in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. It reads, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. You can rely on God's faithfulness. You can 
rely on it. You can bet on it. You can you can swear by it. So you so respond with faithfulness to his faithfulness and uh, hold on to the hope in all the situation. <clears throat> Trust in the Lord. Believe in the Lord. Believe on the Lord. Do what the word says. Obey the Lord. Follow Jesus Christ. And you will see that God promises to be filled in your life. Amen. So let us pray. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for this word, Lord. <clears throat> we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, for your trustworthiness. Help us, Lord God, to not worry, to not um, doubt, to not resist, Lord God, what you have put before us. Not lean on to our own understanding, but to receive, Lord God, every gift that you present to us. The greatest gift is life, and then the next greatest gift is salvation. Thank you for your son. Thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you, Lord God, for the love, the unconditional love that you have set towards us. Help us, Lord God, to love you in return and to love others in the process. Let our saying be yes and amen to, to your sure and firm um, promises to us, Lord. We love you and we adore you and we bless your holy name. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> so thank you all for tuning in. <clears throat> I would like to say one more thing. Um, if you're in the Fayetteville, Georgia area and uh, would like to uh, come fellowship with us, we have services every Saturday at noon at 115 Cathy Avenue. That's K-A-T-H-I Avenue in Fayetteville, Georgia. And we would love to have you be a part of our service. If you're unable to be here, then you can always join us uh, on Facebook Live. Um, and that's going to be every uh, uh, Saturday also, but not on at 12 because we only broadcast the message part of the service. And that's usually around 1225. We might be a little early. We might be a little late after that. So around that time, but usually we'll try to start around 1225. And so please join in and help us out by uh, sharing uh, the message, sharing the post, uh, sharing the web page. Um, and it's not helping us, just helping us out, uh, but it's truly just to help out those you share it with so that they can receive the word. I, I pray to God often that I don't waver from the truth, that I don't provide my opinions, my philosophies that I provide with us says the Lord in the scriptures. That's where I present all the scriptures so that you can see it's coming straight from the Bible. And I try to include everything in the correct context. Uh, so. Uh, uh, it's good to have you with me joining in each week, and uh, I'm looking forward to being with you again. So God bless you. Until next time. Peace.